Let me walk, blessed Lord, in the way thou hast gone, leading straight to the land above. Bringing cheer everywhere to the sad and the lone. Fill my way every day with love. Oh, fill my way every day with love. As I walk.
our prayer this morning, more of Jesus. That's why we've gathered. You can be seated.
There is a fountain open in the house of David you who would believe. And there are streams of grace that's flowing down from care. Chad dropped it on me last time with not much uh, chance to get nervous but he asked me a few months ago if I would minister and I just said without thinking yeah sure brother <laughs> uh, but that's just because we always want to help people we always want to be there for each other but yeah you, you get nervous Thank you, I appreciate that. You can just chill out and sit down for a minute because I need to relax. I appreciate you very much and I appreciate you playing. The Lord's good. Um, just want to say greetings <clears throat> from back home. And they love you all very much. And uh, it's crazy because on Wednesday night, I was minute preaching obviously, and, uh, and I said, well, we'll be together on Sunday anyway. You'll... <laughs> 
I'd sort of kept it a secret that I was going to be here until I think Brother Chad mentioned it at the communion service so nobody else would know and I was thankful. <laughs> and then uh, Brother Mike said to me sneakily, oh, we know who's ministering next Sunday. <laughs> oh, okay, that's fine. I just want to say thank you um, to Brother Chad as well. And Brother Chad includes you all. That you're so loving and so welcoming to us. And uh, we just pray that Brother Chad has a time of rest. It's um, <laughs> something that he, you, you need now and again. And for me, I don't kind of have anybody else to sign a stand in for me. So I don't get that break. <laughs> but I've got it now. But I haven't got it now. <laughs> but it's all good. The Lord's good. I want to thank you as well from Brother Mike, Sister Mary, and Sister Pony, Sister Hildegard for your prayers and support, you know, during the time that we had. That was a very trying time. And they wanted to mention that I said thank you personally. And we just so, they were so touched as well. I was preaching a couple of <clears throat> weeks ago on healing, and healing comes in many different ways music, love, and all these things. And, and how, you know, I know for Sister Mary and the cards that she's had on the mantelpiece from, from you guys. And the, the love and the appreciation, it really is something that helps us and helps that healing process. The Lord's good. You know, we're all just kind of doing our bit, you know, for the Lord. And um, I'm, <laughs> I'm just a farm boy, you know, and I just wanted to farm. And the Lord kind of, yeah, called me. And it's not really what I chose to do in life. And, um, but it's what the Lord's got for me. And if the Lord would ask us to do it again, we'd do it again. Each one of us, whatever sacrifice we have to make. Um, but I've just got a real simple thought this morning. And I'm just praying that the Lord just gives it, you know. Um, I've got, I'm, I'm, I'm not the cleverest fella. <laughs> I'm very simple. And so I've got to write everything down because I forget. If you ask me, I'm being serious, if you ask me what I had for dinner yesterday, I've got to really sit down and think about it, and I've forgotten now. There was potatoes there, and there was something else. Steak, that's right. I'm, I'm terrible memory. I just can't help it. So I've got to write it all down. And You know, the Lord took a few loaves and a few fishes, and he fed a multitude. And the Lord can take a few words this morning, and... My thoughts are everywhere. Brother Kyle, bless his heart. Where is he? He's up there somewhere, isn't he? He came to... Uh, where is he? There he is. Smiling face. He came to put his arms around me, and I said, oh, Brother Kyle. Do you know, I'm, I'm being honest with you. This is the first time that I've ever had my thoughts everywhere. You know, I don't... Usually it just kind of all comes, but the Lord gave me this word that three weeks ago, whatever it was, and I was just really stressed out about what... Lord, what would you want? But I was kind of driving the semi and I was busy that day and I was listening to the service and then Brother Chad actually, I was listening to while I was working and, <clears throat> and then the next morning, nothing, and I was really stressed out so I couldn't listen anymore, I turned it off and it, because I'm just me, I have to um, prepare usually on Sunday mornings. So I'm up at five and go and prepare. So that's my Sunday morning because usually I've got to be work and I'm just, just so busy on Saturday. So five o'clock in the morning, I just sort of press play on the sermon that I had half finished. And Brother Chad, I, I just got kind of, there was just something he said. I listened to five seconds of what he said. He was preaching on the twin within and he just spoke about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And suddenly, I, the, you just kind of know it, Brother Kyle, you said it. You just kind of, and that's what the thought was. And the thought became, it started with a question. A question, where did the tree of the knowledge of good and evil come from? Where's, the, where's it come from? You know, many times I find, um, I find many answers, many truth, the revelation comes for me many times through questions. So we have a question about something, and that leads the thought to finding the truth. So, you know, when I was a, when I was a kid, I'm still trying to calm down, by the way. When I was a kid, we used to, one thing, you know, I grew up pretty poor, but um, one thing that my dad, he's kind of a traveler, um, and we kind of traveled a lot as children. That's the one thing that we did do. We were poor, but we traveled, and you would fly on the plane. I'd love sitting there looking out the window, and though back then there were the big old planes, the big old, big old things, and massive wings, and, you know, the, the big, and you'd get in the big flaps, you'd watch them flicking up and down. Do you remember that? 
and you'd see them flicking up and you'd see all the hydraulics and stuff and I was fascinated. And, well, we came over on, I mean, you guys, it's probably old for you guys, but we came over on one of these new sort of Dreamliner things and then um, I noticed that you've got three huge flaps and there's one absolutely, it's about two and a half foot long. And the whole aeroplane, the whole time, they were only using that little flap. And you just, it would move like, I was sat there watching it, it moved like an inch, and the whole thing would start moving. And then, and then we came into some turbulence, and, and that little, they didn't start using the big ones, no, no, no. It used to be like back 15, 20 years ago, you know, when the message was, we were all a little bit Pentecostal or whatever, and you know how it is, you'd, you'd get the big guns in to do everything. You'd always have the big people to come and sort things out. And I know in Europe, like, you'd have the big preacher come around and sort all the wall, small ones out. And... But this aeroplane, it was just like this little flap. Mate, and the turbulence came and the place started rocking around. And that little flap just started flicking his finger. And, and, he, and he sorted the whole thing out. It's awesome. So I thought, if the Lord can do that, if, if, if that works in, in the natural, then the Lord can just take a small little word and just, just gently flick us in the right direction and steer us. The Lord is good. You know, these wings of the old eagle, it'll carry us home. And if, if the Lord just flicks that little wing and it just, we'll be fine. All is good. So this question came, where did the tree of life come from? So hopefully I've calmed down. So if we can open our Bibles, please. To Genesis 1.1. And oh, we can stand for this one. Yes, indeed. Hope you can understand me. I haven't uh, gone all American yet. We were about, I was, this is going to embarrass Josh, but we we're about 15 minutes from home. I said, so Josh, are you going to go all American? He said, no dad, I'm from Yorkshire. I'm, I'm, I'm staying in Yorkshire. Well, last night he came back from, where were they? Columbus. They'd been out with Riley and the boys, Sam, and he's telling me, so I so, said, so, Josh, what'd you get, mate? He says, I got a t-shirt and some jeans. I said, you mean a t-shirt? He said, no, I got a t-shirt. <laughs> anyway, it's all good. The Lord's good. <laughs> it's a little bit of Babylon in it, but all is well. So I'd like to start, if we can, please. Let's just to read Genesis 1 1. But before we do, I'd just like even just, just to pray and then, and then we'll read. We pray before, Lord Jesus, we eat a meal, Lord, and we pray now before we're fed of your word. Lord Jesus, who are we to stand here, Lord? Who are we, Lord? Who am I, Lord? The life I've lived, Lord. I loved you always, Lord, but I didn't live right, Lord. And Lord, now you changed me. You called me to this place, Lord. And I'm standing here, Lord. I'm not comfortable, Lord. Lord Jesus, come down and just speak to us, we pray. Bless my brother in Lord Jesus, are they here? And Lord Jesus, please deliver the thought like you gave it to me, Lord. Just encourage me, I pray. Just encourage the people, Lord Jesus. Bless your word now and open your word to us, we pray. We love you, Lord. Amen. So Genesis 1.1. <clears throat> It says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Notice it says there, heaven, one. Heaven and the earth. So you may be seated and you sit down. We pray a blessing on the reading of the word. So our title this morning for the thought, for the sermon, I don't claim to be a, I don't claim to be a preacher. And I don't know if Brother Michael and Sister Marion and so on have ever actually noticed. But I always start by saying, my thought for this evening or the thought for this morning. I don't like to say the title of the sermon because I'm, I'm honestly, I'm not, very, I'm not a preacher. But the thought is seed sown, trees grown and fruits shown. Brother Ben in here somewhere. There he is. And Brother Ben is the, the master of the subtitles. So I'm going to give a subtitle, Roots and Fruits. I was kind of between, it's pretty good. The Lord is good. Oh yeah. So uh, we've just read Genesis 1.1. 1, 1, and it's in the beginning, Brother Franco. I'm going to use this already if it's possible. I'm, I'm, uh, I've got a whiteboard at home, but I'm going to try this one again. So we're gonna, I'd like to just do a little timeline here. And here, right time. Uh, and in time is going that way. Okay, and it's very difficult to use this. Time's going that way, so it's a timeline in theory. And, and so, so here we have, here we have like a line of time, and we're gonna say zero, zero here, 
zero, and this is really bad. Forgive me. And this is now, so this is now, when we say zero, <laughs> I was laying in bed this morning and your thoughts start turning and I just thought, well, actually time, when did time actually begin? This is not a total, total side subject. When did time begin? Well, it says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Well, that must have been time. Or was it when God said, um, when, when the evening and the morning was the first day? Well, that's like one day, isn't it? That's time. But if Adam and Adam, which would be Eve, but Adam and Adam, his other half, were actually living in the Garden of Eden in the morning and morning in the first day, we don't know how long it went on, but if there was a month, if there was a year, if there was two years of morning and first, morning and evening was the day, were they, was there time? Well, there was morning and, there was, there was day, morning and evening, but actually, if there's no death, then they were still in eternity, if you know what I'm saying. So this, this time, this zero that I've written here, it, it's not something that I can answer, but I like to ask questions. I always like to ask questions. So where is this, where does time begin? Well, the reason I'm saying this is, is that it's like there's a, there's a blending of time. There's a blending of time going from eternity into time, because although the evening and the morning was the first day, if you're not going to die, then it doesn't matter how many days there is. If the fall hadn't have happened, for example, we wouldn't be here, we know that. If the fall hadn't have happened, then we would be on the 65 million and 31st morning and evening was the first, was the whatever day. See what I mean? Well now, the reason I'm saying this, the reason I'm bringing this little point is, just, just as a thought for you guys to think about later on, it's like now, in this church age, where we are specifically now, time is kind of blending again. So at the beginning, we get this kind of blending in that's it's, it's kind of unsure where it started. And we, I would personally say, well, I don't know. I just don't know where it started. There's a blending. But now, we're, we're in Laodicea, but we're not in Laodicea. Yeah. We're in the seventh church age, but we're in the bride age. Yeah. We are, uh, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ in our bodies, we are now resurrected, but we're dead. Yeah. We're dead, yet we live. Yeah. So there's this kind of blending that goes on now also. And it's a nice blending. So I'm going to put here, just here, and Brother Franco explains to me that I can move this somehow. How do you do that, Brother Franco? Swipe. Oh, the screen. Gotcha. Yep, yep. And I've just said gotcha. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Josh. So here I'm, going to put, <laughs> here I'm going to put an earth, and I'd like to draw an America there and a Europe there. Okay. And I'm going to put over here, I'm going to put the moon and the sun. So, yeah, and we can even put Adam and Eve down here as well. Adam and Eve, which is this, mate, this is hard to do. I'm drawing it, looking up there, but it's all good. Cool. So, that's where we are now. So, we've read in the scriptures, in the beginning, God created heavens and earth. And now, here's another one for you. This is the beginning, but it's not the beginning. See, Genesis 1-1 is the beginning of creation. Okay, so if we want to go to the beginning, we've got to go to John 1 1. So let's turn to John 1 1. We're not going to get into that. Well, we might do actually. We'll see. John 1. This is actually the beginning of the beginning. This is Genesis 1 is the beginning of creation, it's not the beginning. So we're on John, John 1, and we're going to read 1 to 3. So now it says, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things, now listen, this is the, why we say that it's not the beginning. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Listen, all things the Bible teaches us that all things were created through the Lord Jesus Christ. So what it says in Genesis 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. As soon as it said he created, that means that that is not the beginning. So we've got to go to John 1, we'll see what happens. This is now the question you see, where did, the tree, where did the tree of knowledge and good and evil came from? This is a question that came. So now we've got to swipe the, um, swipe the board, and I'm going to pretend that this is like, uh, do you have gazillions here? Oh yeah, you've got everything. 60 gazillion, I don't know how to spell that, gazillion years okay and it's back this way okay because we don't know i'm not trying to be clever i don't know but now so so now I'm, I'm, and i like i love this kind of infolding um the idea of listen and this is simon now this is not 
um, you know, not word. I, I love the, f- I love this thought in the beginning. This is Simon now. This is not Sister Simon. Yeah, in the beginning, we have this kind of enfolding power, which is God, the Word. So, and, and in there is all these attributes that's got to come out. But in there, we have kind of the pillar of fire, the cloud. Although it's not manifested yet, it's still in there. Everything is in there. So, and so I like to draw, I draw these little arrows. And I always imagine the kind of the, the, the Moses, this is Simon. I always imagine Moses with the, with the burning bush. That the burning bush was kind of, it wasn't just a normal fire. It was a fire that was kind of enfolding on itself all the time. Like a... And it's kind of just power, like raw power. And that's how I personally like to think that in the beginning, this is how it was. There was a power there. So... It's not just kind of in the beginning was the word and the sun comes down, a Bible off, way off in the distance. No, 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 no. Because this, this, this book, this, this word now, this was also in that thing, in the enfolding power. But this is the written word. This is the written word. So this is for us to read and uh, we're, we're thankful for that. Now, <clears throat> everything that is in this written word that we have here was in the beginning. So in the beginning was the word, including this, although not manifested yet. And even in the scriptures, as we read through the scriptures, within the scriptures there is everything that God has ever happened, everything that's ever happened is in here, good and bad, everything that's ever happened, everything that's happening now and everything that ever will happen, it's all all in this word. It's Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever. See, so... It's, about, it's not about a book being back there, then. It's about the word being back there. And, you know, Brother Chad brought out, uh, I think a couple of weeks ago, I, I listened to a sermon, I think it was on the plane or whatever, and he's talking about the, the, the God, God, uh, what did he say? He said, the spirit, God, and Christ. Do you remember he wrote it on the board, I think? And it's all one. It's all the word. It's all, it's just the enfolding. It's all there, although it's not been manifested yet. Okay. So now, before anything has been um, manifested, God is now alone with his thoughts. Now, God's thoughts are as real as we're standing here. So it's not just some kind of thought bubble. It is reality. The thought of, if I build something, then I'll think it out first. If you like Brother John, I'll think it out first, and I'll build the whole thing in my head, and then I'll build it. And, but it's not a reality until it's done. But with God, it's, it's a question, when, when was the blood of the Lamb slain? Before the foundation of the world, it was done. So before actually we are here, the blood's already been slain. How far back? Well, we don't know, but actually we do know because it's there. Amen. Back there, when he was alone with his thoughts, and his thoughts were as real as. Okay. So the seeds now, the seeds of everything were in that being of life. So we're looking at seeds sown, trees grown, fruits shown. So the seeds sown, the seeds of everything, the seeds of this was in that back then. And the seeds of you and me, we were also back there. Just turn to Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1. We've got a few scriptures. Ephesians 1, we'll read 3 to 5. Ephesians 1, 3 to 5. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessing. Remember it says blessed, past tense. Past tense blessed. With all spiritual blessings in heaven places. That's present tense. In heaven places, in Christ. And that's both present tense. Okay. Verse four. According as he hath chosen, past tense, chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy without blame before him in love, having predestined and I like to say predestinated, predestinationed. Makes it a bit more understandable for me anyway. You know, to be predestinated is nice, but if we have a predestination, it's already destined. You know. Anyway, predestinated unto us um, the adoption of the children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. So, we can't remember it. Okay, We cannot remember this. But the Lord's shown us in his word that even back then, even back then, we were chosen in him, in him, before anything was created. We were in the original seed of life. Okay? We were in that original seed of life. 
Okay, not manifested yet, but we were there. So, the tree of life then, and we'll see that later on, the tree of life was in there, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the tree of life, so, so the tree of life began, was way back then, the tree of life. Because don't forget, in the garden we've got the two trees, we've got the tree of life and the, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Because all things were created by him and for him. We've just read it. The Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible teaches, is, is, is created by all things by through the Lord Jesus Christ. The tree of life, he is the tree of life. We'll see that later on as well, you know, when we read the quotes and that. But we see the tree of life. So there's a tree of life, Christ, was back then. So the origin of the tree of life begins, has no beginning. The tree of life. In Ephesians 3, 9, we won't read it. In fact, I'll read it for you quickly because it's right here. Ephesians 3, verse 9, it says, And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning, that's this one we're talking about. This is the, this is the when he says from the beginning, it's talking about this beginning, yeah? Which from the beginning, where's verse 9? Beginning of, of the world hath been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ. Which one to nail that one on the head because, you know, who created, who did this, that. The Bible is fairly clear. The Lord Jesus Christ did all things, created all things. That manifestation of God called Jesus Christ, the one, our Lord and Savior. Okay. So, the Lord Jesus Christ, this, in, this here, back here, and I keep putting down here, but I'm saying there, it is the, it's the source of everything. Right? It's the source of everything. Every, everything that ever exists came from that back then including the seed of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Amen. Including. The seed was created, that seed of the knowledge of tree and good and evil was created back then for a purpose. Okay? The old devil Lucifer was created, I'm sorry. And the seed was prepared, it was a tool, Lucifer, the tool to bring out the attributes of God. Okay, I've got, I just want to read the baptism of the Holy Ghost here, Brother Brown, 1958. I just want to read something here. It says, oh, that's it, yeah. Some people might struggle. I mean, even, not us here, obviously. Different places struggle to understand that Lucifer was created by God. Well, if he wasn't, then God was created by Lucifer. There's got to be one, you know what I mean? It doesn't work. It doesn't work, okay. So when you say, then why did God, the infant of God, ever permit sin? Brother Brown says. You know, there's attributes in God, and if God would have never permitted Satan, he knew when he created Lucifer that he was to be the one to corrupt the world. Oh, our God is not something little pushed off in the corner, but he's an infinite God who never had a beginning and never will have an end. And in him, he is in his attributes. He is a savior. How could he ever be known as a savior if there hadn't been something to save? How would we ever know? So we see... Well, we know it already, but we see the Lord created Lucifer for a purpose. Amen. And it was, in the part, it, was, it was in the plan of God. You know, the, the seed that was planted back there called Lucifer, it started, notice, it started as a seed. This is the thought, I hope you're going to catch my thought. It's a, it started as a seed. I can actually maybe draw that in here somewhere. Yeah, it's, I've, uh, I don't know how to delete Brother uh, Franco. But it's all good. Right. We're going to put here in here somewhere. Wrong. Turn it the way. Right. So I'm going to put here a little bit of grass and stuff and a bit of soil. You know, it is. Who's a farmer in here? Boom. Ron. Amen. God bless you, brother. Who else? Oh, of course, John. Guess what, guess what I'm saying. Yep. Sweet. Yep. They caught the revelation. What can I say? So that's a seed. And I'm going to put here, I'm going to put a little arrow there, and I'm going to put Lucifer. Lucifer. You know, this is a total side note. You know, there's only one mistake in the Bible for me, right? They give Satan a capital letter, a Lucifer. I never write Satan and Lucifer with a capital letter. He don't deserve it. It's true, it's true. It's just one of my little things. So this seed called Lucifer started way back there. Yeah. It started way back there. Maybe millions of years ago, I don't know. Only the Lord knows. I'm, I'm not that, I ain't that clever. But um, if we notice, 
The seed that was inside Lucifer when he created him, the seed began to grow. The seed, you should call it the seed of discrepancy, the seed of the false vine, it began to grow. Lucifer got puffed up in his own heart. This, when the seed began to grow that the Lord had placed in him, okay, the seed of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, when that seed started to grow, it, it had to start manifesting. It was growing inside him, that was it. And you know, he, the result of that, the fruits then that we began to see from this tree, already back then, is that we have angels turning to worship Lucifer instead of God. You know, if we notice, the, the Satan, Lucifer, he convinced other angels to worship him. Right? So he began sowing the seeds from his own tree that had come out of his heart that was growing. He began to sow the seeds before the Garden of Eden. He began to sow those seeds of doubt into the heart, or not say hearts, they don't have hearts, into those angels. And if we notice, the angels that fell were also created to be deceivable. Okay, this is all in God's great plan. It's not a mistake. I don't want you to think about these things. Just kind of think outside the box. You know, I always tell my folks, you know, the word of God's like a diamond. You know, and, and, and if we just kind of walk around the diamond, we see the same diamond from so many angles. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not you know, just, just, we, see, we see it and it just kind of opens and makes the picture bigger. God created them in a way that they could be deceived. Now, think about this now. If those angels, I love these questions. If these angels could be deceived, if those angels could be convinced, listen carefully, then God, when he created those specific angels, the ones that he knew would fall, he created them with some kind of level of free thinking agency. Think about it. If we, if we can be convinced or deceived, it means that we can actually think for ourselves. So God, within those angels, he, he gave them some kind of, I, wouldn't, I don't want to say free moral agency because that refers to human beings, but some kind of free thinking ability. Like, ah oh, yes, boys, come and worship me. Oh yes, I'll give you a special long gown, whatever it is. And they're thinking, oh, sounds good, sounds good. You know what I mean? And they're thinking. It's not just kind of like, no, 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 no. It's like, whoa, they're thinking. Like, well, maybe, mm-hmm. convincing, sowing the seeds. See, it's, it's, it's quite nice to think these, but it's true. These things have to be. If the angels were deceived, God firstly created them that they could be deceived. And secondly, they had some kind of free thinking. Okay. So the seeds of discrepancy are then sown in the minds of those angels. I'm going to say mine, not soul. They don't have souls. And they fell. Okay. And it's sometimes hard to understand, but... <laughs> It had to be so God could be fully manifesting all his attributes. So now there's war in heaven. Lucifer and his angels are now cast down. And I don't have room to really put it in there. In fact, we could put it in there because, you know, for the younger ones, it's easier to, to kind of see. If I, put a, uh, if I put a dotted line down, that's kind of the time frame. You remember time comes this way. I'm saying time. Obviously, we're not in time here at the moment, but just to correct that one. Okay, so, so what did I say here? I've, I've forgotten already. Um, yeah, yeah, angels, that's it, angels falling, yeah, so, so angels, angels, cast down, cast down, okay, and then, yeah, they're just down, down, and we can even draw them like, kind of like laying flat for the kids to understand. Okay, so they're cast down now, and uh, the seed that had started growing in Lucifer's, I'm going to say his heart, but he didn't have a heart, but in Lucifer's heart, as it were, it had grown, it was grown to the point, listen carefully, the seed, remember that he is the tree of life, he, start, he always was the tree of life, but there's a seed that begins, and he's put in the heart of Lucifer. I'm saying the heart of Lucifer, you understand what I'm saying? Okay, and now the seed has grown to the point that it's manifesting, it's kind of bearing fruits, right? It was branching out now, and it was enough, mature enough, we could say, to have its own, and now he's casting the seeds into the hearts of other angels. So the evil is now cast down. And you know, 
Let's just read uh, Genesis 2, go back to Genesis 2. And this is now what really started my thought this morning, was this question, where did that tree come from? So we'll read Genesis chapter 2, Genesis 2, and we're going to read 8, verses 8 and 9. And the Lord planted a garden eastward of Eden, and there he put the man whom he created. And out of the ground made he the Lord to grow every tree that is pleasant to sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So now we see the tree of life is also in the garden of Eden. So now we fast forwarded here. The tree of life is here also. So actually I could put here, because it's, remember that's with... Um, with Adam and uh, Adam and we'll say Eve, we know it was Adam and Adam, and we'll put the third man, the fourth man in the fire, as it were, okay? And I'll just put the pillar of fire over his head, that's the Lord Jesus, okay? So he is, he is in the garden, this tree of life, okay, is in the garden of Eden also. Right, eight and nine, and now we'll read 16 and 17. And the Lord God commanded of the man, saying, of every tree in the garden, thou mayest freely eat, hang about. And his brother Chad was touching on this when he, in this service that he took, that he, when he ministered. Adam had access, Adam and Eve, we'll say Eve, Adam, they had access to that tree of life. They had access to the tree of life. They had communion. Walk with me. They had access to the tree of life. Verse 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou, uh, uh, that thou eatest, thou therefore of thou shalt surely die. So the question was, <laughs> where did this tree come from? And now we see, listen carefully now, now we can see why it's a tree in the Garden of Eden. It's not a seed in the Garden of Eden because the tree's grown. The seed started way back here. So now we fast forward and in this tree, of, in, the, in the garden also, and I'll have to put it in here as well, we have, um, how am I going to draw this one? Ooh, two little horns. We have also the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Hmm, okay. It's not a seed. In the Garden of Eden, it's a tree. It had been growing a long time and it started out as a seed in the heart of Lucifer, okay? But now, it's a tree and it's bearing fruit. Notice the Lord says, don't eat of the fruit of the tree. He was, a, you know, um, Brother Hadfield was the old brother that passed away. It's Thingamajee's grandfather, isn't it? And he was the gardener, wasn't he? Amen. Yeah, that's uh, Sister Nanette's father, is that right? Am I right? Yeah, is that good? Yeah, sweet. He was the gardener. That's it, yeah. He was the gardener. So he knows all about this. Listen, I love it. You know, trees are nice. We've got a few of them, and I feel like chainsawing them down. Because they don't give much fruit. But I tell you what, what, a couple of them do give fruit. It took years for them to give fruit. You can't plant a seed in the ground, and the next year it gives fruit. It takes some amount of maturing. And this is what we're sort of seeing here, because back here it's a seed, the seed grows and it starts to grow and branches out and it starts to bear fruit and the seeds are cast to the other angels and we fast forward here and now we've got a fully grown tree. Yeah. Now in the garden, and, and, and it's bearing fruit and that's what the Lord says, don't eat. So what we saw, this perverting and the deceiving that was going on in the, in the garden of Eden was the fruit that started out as the seed that was sown. Now the tree's grown, and now the fruits are being shown. So when the Lord created Lucifer, he made him with the seed of the false vine that would grow into what we see today. He planted him with that seed inside him. And that's where the tree came from that we saw in the Garden of Eden. So now, look, it's hard to understand sometimes, you know, well, God, how can he do that? And how can he create something with evil in him? Well, the scripture also says, is there any evil done in the city that God hasn't done it himself? He's got a way of doing things. He's got a way of making and manifesting to bring out that adversary, the perfect adversary, to bring out his attributes. But think about, you know, the Lord is, to help us just to, to think on that one, the Lord is so perfect. Can any of you in here forget? Other than me. Seriously, anybody can forget, right, uh, Brother John, isn't it, Brother John? Brother John, when's, you know, remember that time last, uh, last week that somebody stamped on your foot? I'm just saying, you know. And it hurt, yep. 
and you were a bit... <clears throat> See, we, 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 we remember things. I kind of remember things. We, we, we try to forget and we forgive people. It's amazing how we, we forgive people. And I had the revelation a while ago that, you know, if, if we just forgive people of the evil they do to us, then all that is left is the good that they've done to us. If it's someone we're in a relationship with. So we truly have to forgive people from our heart. But, you know, it's funny how, uh, and, I, and the Lord knows my heart, I, I, just, I just love people, I just love everybody. And, I, and some people kind of upset me. And, but, you know, and they've been nasty to me. And, and you forgive them and you pray for them. It's like, oh, Lord, I've got over that one. And then <clears throat> something else happens and it brings back all the old memories. See, we struggle to forget in these bodies. God is so great that he can even forget. And I'm not talking about, like, you computer guys in here. You know, I struggle to drive my phone. But, you know, you computer guys, you can go back into the computer and find stuff that's been deleted years ago. We're not talking about that kind of empty the, the what do you call it, a bin on the field, empty the bin on your computer. We're not talking about that. We're talking about total forgetness. For, for, total forget, forgetness, it's not even a word. Forget, forgetfulness. Total memory loss. The Lord is so perfect, he can actually have a total memory loss. That makes the older people in here feel pretty good. It just makes us more spiritual. <laughs> See, God is so high above all our ways. When God created Lucifer for his perfect plan, he actually created within Lucifer a go-wrong chip. He created a little chip in there that was going to go wrong. A bit like our fridge and freezer. You know what I mean? Yeah, a bit like a Chevy, suburban. It's got got that go-wrong chip built in, and and all the angels that were going to fall were created with the same chip. See, it's not, it's perfect. It's so perfect. When God created, he engineered Lucifer to make him so that he would fall and become Satan. He would be a further manifestation or a further, yeah, manifestation's good. The attributes of him were going to come out and unfold into this picture called Satan. He created him as Lucifer. He became Satan. It was no mistake. And when the Lord created you and me, it was so perfectly engineered perfectly that even though we go through the toughest trials and tribulations you know the seed within us it just keeps growing never stops growing oh the Lord's good we are so perfectly made to fulfill the role we have here to fulfill the role and you know I think brother Kyle preached about the scars and listen to that that was beautiful and it touched my heart but you know each limp we have each scar we have Everything we've ever gone through is for us to be that perfect bride. He so engineers us so that we can fulfill our role perfectly. And listen, if God takes such extremes to mold you and me, do you think that he does any less when he creates his greatest adversary? He, he makes him an engineered Lucifer so perfectly to be that enemy. He knew what the tree, of, the, the tree was going to look like before it was even a tree when it was still a seed. So in the Garden of Eden now, there's two trees. One's the tree of Satan, the false vine, and the other is the tree of life, the true vine. Let's read uh, Paradox, a quote from Paradox in 1964. Um, Jesus was the tree of life from the Garden of Eden. Do you believe that? Congregation says amen. He was the tree of life. There was a tree in the garden. One of them was, uh, if, you, if you touched it, now we have our differences on that. He's obviously preaching in a mixed congregation. He says, now we have our differences on that, so I won't go into it, but let's say it's a tree of disobedience. He's being very gentle with the people. Disobedience. And as soon as they touched that tree, all the people were to die, and they had to put them away from this other tree, because if they eat this tree of life, they would all live. See what I mean? So, so we have, it, it's like the tree of life is so, so powerful. The tree of life was so powerful, that even if they'd done wrong, if they quickly went and touched the ate from the tree of life, that's it, they've got life again. Yeah. You know, the, the Lord Jesus, it doesn't matter who you are, what you are, what your condition is, how low you're sunk in sin, you come and eat of that tree of life, you've got eternal life. That's it. Because if they eat of this tree of life, they would live knowing right from wrong. That's right. You probably, you, you know that as ministers. We have our ideas on that, and we probably differ what the tree was, but we can all know that Christ is that tree of life. Amen. The Lord is good. Amen. So, we have our two trees, the two vines. And now we see where they come from and how they started. And 
we see how they are both bearing this fruit. They're both bearing fruit. They're both mature. Think about this. In the Garden of Eden, it was a tree, it was not a seed. Trees bear fruit, seeds don't bear fruit. They were both mature in the Garden of Eden. You know, before the fall, the Lord walked with Adam. The Lord walked with Adam. This is the communion they had. The access they had to the fruit of the tree of life. But the, the, the invisible tree, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, we say it's invisible. The fruit of that tree caused the divide between God and man. And hence, quickly barring the way, because although now they've sinned, they go and eat of the fruit of that tree, and as Brother Ram says, they're suddenly going to live again. So the way had to be barred. So now, this, this fellowship, this walking with God, has been lost until now. It's lost until now, and we've seen it again. First, we've seen it in Brother Branham when he, the Lord, the same one here, which is there, turns to Brother Branham and says, walk with me. See, it's now, it's, it's, it's been restored. This, this tree is being restored. The, the obedience to the word is what brought on the fellowship and the walk with me. Amen. Everybody wants to be, you know, I've said it before. Everybody, everybody wants to, um, everybody wants to, uh, be the husband of the king, but nobody wants to bake the cake for him. You know what I mean? And it's like everybody wants to walk with, walk with God like, like Brother Branham, but nobody wants to give that life a sacrifice. And I know we all do. We, that's our hearts. Our heart is to give that sacrifice. But that's what brings that fellowship back, is the true obedience. And you know, I think Brother, Brother Chad said, didn't he? He said, if, you, if we could just get to the point where we only ever eat of the tree of life, and then we get that eternity kind of thing blending in. Though we're dead, yet we live. You know, though we're old and we look a little bit worn out and secondhand, you're still young. It's a paradox. You're young and you're old and all is well. You know, after the fall now, the way to the tree of life was blocked. It was barred. And the angels were placed, that's Genesis 3, uh, 24, I'll read that. Genesis 3, 25, I can read it quickly, you're all right. Genesis 3, 25, and he drove out the man and he placed to the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims. <clears throat> Notice, it's beautiful, I've just seen that. Listen, the east of the Garden of Eden. We're going to meet at the eastern gate in the New Jerusalem. You know, the way that was blocked is going to be opened again. It's awesome. He drove out the man and placed him at the east of the Garden of uh, Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which, t- which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So this tree now, the, the way, the flaming sword has been put there to block the way, the access to this tree of life. And the word of God is quicker than any, sharper than any two-edged sword. It's the word of God is put there to guard the way to the tree of life. And the way to the tree of life is the way to Jesus Christ. And it was blocked until he came to redeem us by his blood. And now the way, the way, the way to life was blocked until he came himself Okay, now I just want you to hold your hands in Genesis 3, 24 and flick over to John 14. Just go to John 14. John 14, 6. John 14, 6. The Lord Jesus says, I am, listen, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You see, look, the way that was blocked came to open, the, sorry, the way which was blocked, the way he came to open the way that was blocked. Amen. See, the way, the same, I am the way. Yeah. The I am, the I am the way came to open the way that was blocked Amen. to himself. Yeah. He came to open that. He, the revealed word, the word of the hour, is the way back to the tree of life. And no, no one can come to the Father. No one can come back to this one. Nobody can come back to this one here unless you go through the cross. No one can come there but by me. The way now was veiled. There was a veil over the way, but the way was opened when he rent the, twain, the, the veil in twain. He ripped the curtain open that went into the holiest of holies. He rent the veil. He opened the way again. He opened the way to the inner holiest of holies, into the, to the way of life, to the tree of life. 
The veil was rent, and, and behind that veil, if we'd have been standing in the synagogue, kind of looking there, you know, like all righteous and religious, you know, because now we're inside the synagogue and the Lord Jesus is out there hanging on the cross, um, you know, if you were a Pharisee, when the veil was rent in twain, you could have looked out through the window and seen the way hanging on the tree. The way was blocked, the, the curtain was there, badger skins and all the rest of it. It was totally sealed, totally protected by the flaming sword, the word of God. But when he ripped it open, what did we see? We saw the tree of life. That's what we saw. We saw the access back and anybody that eats of the fruit of that tree gets life again. Amen. Though you are dead, yet shall ye live. That's the way back. Amen. See, behind the veil... Now what we see behind the veil is not just a tree, but it's a fully matured tree. And he's bearing all the fruits. It's bearing all the fruits, the attributes of the Savior, the healer. Anyone in here needs healing today? It's there. The fruit's there. Reach out and take it. Go behind the veil, just behind the veil. We long to see his face. What? We long to see his face. We can see his face. The veil's been torn open. Just grab the fruit. The Lord's telling us, just grab it. Now, not to eat the fruit is death. Amen. Not to eat the fruit is death. Right. Notice, now this tree of life, it begins, to, it begins to bear fruit through his bride. The fruit of the Spirit. And if we notice, the Spirit in us produces the same fruits like he the same fruits. We are bearing the same fruits as the original tree because that's where we come from. We come from that original seed. We were in here. Brother Franco, I'm going to try this. Look at that. He said, you can even zoom, but hey. See, I can even... Sister Joyce is just laughing there. I'm going to put in here. Where is it? I've got this wrong now. There we go. Joyce. See what I mean? Sometimes, sometimes we just need to kind of zoom a little bit. Sometimes we just need to zoom to see ourselves. Oh, I'm just a young one. I'm just, just me. I'm just a child. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You are huge in the eyes of the Lord. Even you children, you're massive in the eyes of the Lord. You just zoom in a little bit. And now you say, hey, it's not Jill, it's me. It's not Joyce, it's Jill and Joyce, we know that. But it's me, I'm in there. I'm in there too. Amen. I quite like that. Oh, mate, that's too much. I'm not very good. I'm getting used to this. <laughs> the Lord's good. Let's read Galatians 5. Galatians 5. Galatians chapter 5. And we'll read 22 to 25. (laughs) 22 to 25, Galatians 5. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And if they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts, if we, walk, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Amen. See, that's the fruit of his life that's being manifested in us. That, that seed of life that was planted in us when we came to the Lord, it's been growing. Amen. And it gets to the point where you can't hide it anymore. Amen. And it gets to the point where it starts bearing the fruit. And we don't look back with pride and say, well, look at me, how far I've come. Because, yeah, we don't do that. But you know what I mean? But it's like, but we can see that. So it does help to sometimes take a moment, look in the mirror and say, Lord, that's your grace. Look what you've done. You've actually brought me this far. I can't believe it. I tell you, you know, I used to be a message believer. Everyone thought that I was the perfect message believer. I wasn't. And I knew I wasn't. I knew I wasn't. I was just as worldly as. And there was a time that came when the Lord turned me around. You know, the Lord, you know, we all think, we all think, you know, it's, it's a blessing for the young ones to be raised in the message. It really is, it truly is. When you've got God fearing, Holy Ghost filled parents, absolutely. It's the best. But you know, it's also not easy. You know, I was, you, you're raised in the message and you, you're raised and, and compromise begins to come in. And you end up just as worldly as. But there's always been that seed inside. And sometime, at some point in time, a specific time, the Lord starts to get that seed growing and it ends up that you can't hide it. You can't hide it. 
and he starts to bear fruit. And the fruit that we bear is the fruit of the tree of life. You know, let's just turn our diamond a little bit. We'll look at the manifestation of what's on the inside of the seed. The manifestation of what's... No, no, it's in the Garden of Eden. Cain manifested what was inside the seed that was inside him. He was manifesting that. And he bore the fruit of the tree that was growing in him. So remember the seed that started way back there in the heart of, we'll say the heart of Lucifer, okay? The same seed was sown into the fallen angels and the same seed now is in Cain and begins to bear fruit of that original seed that was planted. So notice the way that Abel, he just had it in him to bring the right thing. He didn't have to try hard. He just kind of, he just, he just did it. He, he just had it inside him. And you know, the, 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 the seed that was inside the seed that was inside of him, he was manifesting that life seed that was inside. He probably didn't even know what he was doing, truly. He probably, you know, we, we, can, we can lay all sorts of um, scenarios out and, well, he looks at his brother and he's got six fingers and he's got five. And he doesn't know what grace is, as it were. He doesn't know that five is grace and six is man, no. He's got six fingers and I've got five and he's that big and I'm this small. And he looks at his parents and thinks, well, my dad's not that big. Um, you know, it doesn't, it, maybe he didn't even think that, but just in him. Listen, I don't think the apple tree has to think very hard. It just does it. Brother Brown likes to talk about, I think it's Brother Brown talks about the sheep bearing the wool and stuff. We can testify to that one. It just grows. They don't have to think about it. It just kind of just bears that fruit. Okay. So... Uh, Abel, Abel brings the right sacrifice. Right, he brings the right sacrifice. So now Cain was the same. He couldn't help but manifest what was inside him. He couldn't help it. It just came out. And what it was, he, he was manifesting the seed from his father, who was the devil. The seed that was in there, full of lies and deception. Let's just read 1 John, number 1 John, just to nail this one on the head. 1 John, that's the 1 John at the end there. Yeah. 1 John 3. 1 John 3, and we're going to read 11 to 12. 11 and 12. 11 and 12 says, For this is the message that we heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Hang about, just pause one second. This is the message that we've heard from the beginning. The beginning of what? The beginning of the beginning. Whether it was preached or not, inside that one with Sister Joyce was love. Was love. Why did the whole plan of redemption start? Because God loved us. God loved that attribute that was inside him. He loved it, and so the plan of redemption starts. So this love is not a new thing. Okay, this, this love began there at the beginning. So it says here, for this is the message we've heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, okay, and slew his brother, and wherefore slew him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. His fruit was evil, and his brother was righteous. And back then, the false vine, he's trying to kill off the true vine. Tried. So he was of the wicked one. So all he could do, all that Cain could do, was to manifest the characteristics of his father. You know, I've, I've said it to our church, but you just look at me. This is probably, you don't know me that well. But if you look at me, I'm going to be dead honest with you. We've got this huge sort of foreheady thing that sticks out. It's an Abbott thing. We've got massive teeth at the front. Two massive teeth. We've all got teeth problems. We've got massive teeth. Massive teeth. I'm like a donkey. Right? Point is, my dad has got the same. My granddad's got the same. My granddad, my nana had these big teeth. We, it's just kind of the Abbott thing. Sorry, Josh. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm not saying it's a bad thing, son. I'm just saying. We, I couldn't help. So when I was born, I didn't, I didn't kind of choose to look like this. All I can do is to manifest the characteristics of the father. That's all we can do. And Cain was the same. All he could do is manifest the characteristics of his father. So if we notice now, one of the characteristics of Cain is, is, is when the Lord questions him, where's your brother? You know, he turns around to him and he says, how do I know? Go and look yourself. I'm my brother in modern language. Go and have a look yourself. I'm my brother's keeper. What? The cheek. Straight to the face of God. Right, and then when he's cast down to be a vagabond, okay, he turns around and says, "No, it's too much for me." 
So what I'm thinking is, and this is Simon now, the attitude that he had, if he's expressing the characteristics of his father, what did Lucifer say when the Lord's casting him and his little merry band of angels down? No, don't do that to me. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's like he's casting him down and he'll have the same attitude because if you look at the son, you know, you'll see the father. That's it. Crazy. The same fruit will be produced by the son that was in the father. Notice here, Cain, part of his characteristics was, you know, this, this manifesting the life that's in him. Part of the characteristics of Cain was to be religious. Religious. Notice how his church was all nice and polished. Oh, yeah. And oh, he didn't just lay the fruit out in the church. Oh, no, he swept the floor and everything. Swept the floor and put some nice flower arrangements and brought the fruit. And, you know, I'm sure that his worship music was all kind of touchy touchy, feely feely, make everyone comfortable and playing on his little flute or something. I don't know. Point is, the contrast. The contrast. He was this religious person, just like his father. Listen carefully, church. Lucifer was in charge of worship. I think he knows how to make the folks feel good. It's like all those angels that fell that had that go wrong chip inside them. How did he lure them? Oh, it feels so good. Hey, ho, hey, all that. Junky music, worship, feeling. He was in charge of worship. He knew. What do we see today? I'm just going to move on here. See, it's these two vines growing. When the Lord made Lucifer, he made it so that all the types would be perfect all the way from that point ever onwards. It was all in there. It was all programmed within the seed. These two vines growing side by side. The one, the tree of knowledge, and the other one, the tree of life. And they're all bearing fruit. They're both bearing fruits. Fruits now that show their origin. I want to read this quote. Man running from the presence of God in 65. Brother Adam says, you can see people today there is two spirits. Whoa, 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 whoa. He's just fast forwarded now. He's just fast forwarded now to today. So he says, you see here, people today, there's two spirits. One of them is the Holy Spirit. The other one is an unholy spirit. One is, uh, uh, and one, as in a person, and one is governed by that. And both of them religious. Now, yeah, there's a strange part. They're both religious, just like Esau and Jacob was. Both religious, like Cain and Abel. Both religious, like Judas and Jesus. Both religious. Both Religion, we see it today, both sides, religious, see? It's the same spirit, the people die, but the spirit doesn't die, it goes right on, both religious. One of them is possessed with the Holy Spirit and lives that kind of life that they should live, and walk godly and honest, and they wouldn't beat you out of a penny. They just do everything honest they can to help you, and the others will just be as nice as can be. The others, we find out, is just the vice versa. And yet both of them are religious spirits, two of them. One Holy Spirit, the other one unholy Spirit. If you notice, it'll even, um, it'll even clay, through claiming religion, they'll make fun of you and call you a holy roller. They do everything they can. So we see these two spirits. We see Cain and Abel, Moses, Korah. We see Judas and Jesus. And Brother Brown was saying that we still see it today. Listen, you know, <laughs> the false vine is not some ugly old priest in some musty old cave luring you in come on in come on in it's not it's it's not some kind of you know it's 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 pretty it's beautiful it's religious it's smooth oh yeah it's smooth smooth talking smooth it's nice it's warm and it's cuddly and well god just loves everyone god loves you the way you are that's not a lie but if you say it, God loves you the way they are, you know, and you're still living wrong, then you're saying God loves the way you are, you stay like that. But if you say God loves you the way you are, now come to the altar, that's another story. You know, God loves you the way you are, but he didn't love me the way I was 20 years ago, although he loved me the way I was. Do you understand? Okay. So the false vine is now so disguised, so disguised, 
that we're hardly able to tell the difference. We're just going to read about that. We'll turn to John 13. John 13, book of John. John 13. John 13. John 13, and we'll read uh, 21 to 29. John 13, 21 to 29. This is, I like this. I like this scripture. It says, When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified, and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you should betray me. Now just listen. He sat there with the disciples. Okay? The Last Supper. Okay? He sat there with his disciples around him. And he says now that one of you, one of you, and there was 12 there, is going to, dis- he's going to betray me. It says then, verse 22, then the disciples looked one another, doubting of whom he spoke. He says now those leaning on Jesus' bosom, one of the disciples who Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him. And, hey, pss, 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 John, John, Pittenberger, John. Who is it? Who is it? You can just imagine the scene. Everyone's asking, Who is it? Ask him who it is. Who, who it should be of whom he spake. Then he lying on Jesus' breast, that's John, brother John, saith unto him, Lord, who is it? <laughs> then Jesus answered, He it is, now listen carefully, He it is. Whom I, shall, whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it, and when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Just pause. This just the, how many young ones have we got in here anyway? Got a few. Let's just, we're moving on here with this time thing. So we're moving on. Oh, I can't draw there, can I? So we're moving along with our time thing. And we get to the point where we're at the cross. This is the cross. Okay, so now just before the cross, that's here, here, okay, we have uh, the Lord Jesus, okay, and he is holding a bread. Okay, so now we go on to the next little part of the story. He takes the bread, this is for the younger ones, he walks across and he takes the bread and he dips it into the bowl with the sop. And then he, he goes, and there's little Judas there with his horns. Okay? And now the Lord Jesus, this is the Lord Jesus pillar of fire again. The Lord Jesus comes and gives it to him to stop. Okay. Who do you think it was who was going to betray him? I'm going to take a sop, and I'm going to dip it in that food. And then I'm going to give it to the one who's going to betray me. <laughs> Judas, put out your hand. <laughs> After this, oh wait, I've got to read to 29, Anna. So, he, right, 27. After the sop Satan entered into him, then said Jesus to him, That doest thou, do it thou quickly. Now no man at the table knew for what intent he speaks to him. <laughs> Give me your hand. Now go and do what you've got to do. <laughs> for some of them thought, because Judas had the bag that Jesus had said unto him, buy those things that we have need against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. After all that that's happened, they're still looking at one another. He's so disguised. Right? Judas had gone out to betray the Lord, right? But because he's so religious, because he's so well disguised, nobody even guessed. In fact, in fact, this is just Simon now, but if you'd have asked Simon Peter, in Gethsemane, while he's like half falling asleep and waking up, and he like wakes up, this is just Simon, wakes up, he's saying, hey, pss, 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 Simon, I've just had a quick count up, mate. There's only 11 of us. Do you know where Judas is? He'd be like, oh, yeah, he's just gone to feed the poor. <laughs> True. True. They had no idea. Because he was so disguised. Unbelievable. Judas did not have horns growing out of his head. 
He didn't. Mate, nobody guessed. See, this religious facade is hiding the seed that's on the inside. You see, and the seed that was planted in Judas was the same seed that was planted in Cain. And it was the same seed from the same tree that was planted in Lucifer's heart back at the beginning. Remember, we read the scriptures. He was of the evil one. Okay, and he was the son of perdition. So now we've got these two grinds growing together. We've got Jesus and Judas, and they're both manifesting the fruit. The Son of God, the Son of Perdition, the true trees, and trees give fruit, not seeds, trees. Now, by seeing the fruit that's growing on the trees, you know, you can tell what sort of seed they come from. You can tell where they come from. And the Lord Jesus said, By their fruits ye shall know them. And every person, listen, every person that has ever lived comes from a source. Either inside them they have the seed of life or the seed of death. It's in every single one. There is no, there's no way. Either the tree of life or the false vine. You can't see outwardly who it is. We see it with Judas. You can't always see outwardly who it is. This religious this, this, this disguise. But the, by the fruits, the fruits cannot lie. The fruits can't lie. The, the tree has to bear the fruit according to the seed. It, it's got no choice. So now... Uh, how Judas delivered the Lord Jesus to death is exactly the same as what was in the seed in the Garden of Eden when Cain kills his brother. It's the same one. Exactly like Cain did in the Garden of Eden, it's the same fruit, so it's manifesting the same uh, attributes, it's manifesting the same characteristics, and both of them are religious. Both of them are religious, but now they've both got this religious disguise, Cain and Judas. It's the same religious disguise, okay, but the fruit always shows what is the original seed. Let's read Matthew 23. Matthew 23, if we can, please. Matthew 23. And we're just going to read 27 to 31, please. 27 to 31. Now, this is the Lord Jesus speaking to somebody who's also got that same seed inside. 27 to 31, I said, yep, yep. Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but within are full of dead men's bones and of uncleanness. Even so ye outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Listen, the Lord Jesus here is pointing to the seed that's on the inside of him. Okay, woe unto you, scribes uh, and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous and say, if we'd have been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Mate. See, these Pharisees, their fruit, the f- their fruit, they were bearing the fruit uh, the same fruit that killed the prophets of old. Okay? Out of their own mouth, the tree that killed the prophets of old, right? They were manifesting the same fruit before the Lord. They were saying out of their own size. They, they, look, basically, the Lord Jesus is saying, look, because you're bearing the fruit, I'm seeing what seed you come from. And the seed that you come from is the one that was killing the prophets of old. And you've got the same filthy seed inside of you. Right? He identified them. He could identify them by the fruit, by their fruits. The proof came out of their own mouths. Their very actions proved who they were, and the fruit showed their origin. Now notice, when Cain killed Abel, Cain had no remorse. He had no remorse. Okay? He had, why though? He had no connection. He had no connection. You know, me and my brother, yeah, we get along okay, but we're not the closest, but <laughs> if I killed him, I'd have remorse. Do you know what I mean? But uh, if you kill anyone, you got to run. You know what I'm trying to say. But he had no. <laughs> just a joy, sorry. Uh, um, you know, but, but because he has no connection, there's no. They come from a totally different. So he has no remorse. Yeah. Totally no remorse. You know, they come from a different life source. Yeah, right. Totally different life source. Yeah. Yeah. There was none of this invisible. You know how we kind of love each other, and one of us thinks of each other, and you want to phone each other. What can I say? 
You know what I mean? And, he, and I get a phone call from Brother Shane. I was thinking about Brother Shane. He was thinking about me. And then he, I just, I kind of, did I message you or you message me, brother? I can't remember. I messaged you. You message me. Do you know what I mean? You just, it's just an invisible bond. And then Brother John, you suddenly get a message. Oh, I was thinking about you. And he's like, mate, I was thinking about you. You know, it's just like Brother John and Brother, and brother Chad and Brother everybody else. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, what is it? It's an invisible bond because you come from the same source. See what I mean? But if you don't come from that same source, it's like you've got no remorse. Like Cain had no remorse. And Judas and Jesus, you know, we, and we, see, we see it today. We see it today. How can it be that, that, you know, thankfully not here, but, you know, you get churches where so-called brethren are kind of real nasty to someone. How can that be? I'm sure we've all experienced it. How can that be? How can it be? Well, it's Judas and Jesus all over again. It's Judas and Jesus all over again because they're coming from this different source. They don't have this compassion, this empathy. They don't have it because it's not their brother. You know, if if we see a homeless person on the street, it's uh, it's not nice. It's not nice. My heart goes, oh, oh, Lord, help him. You know, Lord, help him. But but if if I saw Brother Brian laying on the street, mate, I'd stop the car, jump out, and I'd just do everything I can to help him. What is it? Because we come from the same source. You know what I mean? Now, it comes to fruits. It always comes back to fruits. Because, and why is it always coming back to fruits? Because way back then, it started as a seed. We're looking at the fruits now. We're not looking at the seed anymore. We're looking at the fruits. So, so looking at the fruits, we're seeing where the seed came from. Now, if you're like me, give me a farm seed and I'm all right. But if you give me any other seed and you say, Brother Simon... There's a seed. Tell me what seed that is. I'll say, yeah, no problem. Give me about six months in a greenhouse, I'll tell you. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's true. Because when you don't have a clue what you're doing, it's simple. Just plant the seed. Let it grow. It's like, oh, yeah, that's a tomato plant. I know what that one is now. Do you know what I mean? Come on. You know, when it comes to the time of harvest, we start to see what the seed was, where it came from. You know, let's just look at the roots of these trees. You know, the roots of these trees that we see today manifest, the trees that we see manifest, they come from different origins, they're from different seeds. And at the beginning, they were not intertwined. The roots ain't intertwined. Okay? They were totally separate. And only through the fall did this false vine gain the opportunity to grow together with the true vine on earth okay so the fall which brought the battle in heaven it it brought the battle from that was in heaven onto earth and it came to a whole new level of battle you know we talk about like modern warfare and all the rest of it and but like a lot of it's like hiding out in it and you get these like sleeper cells and all the rest of it and what is it it's this disguise you get all these you get all these the warfare's not kind of straight anymore you know, you, you, it used to be, well, it's Christmas Day now. You know, that's it. Put your guns down, lads, and we'll, have, you know, we'll pass presents to each other and that like it was in the Battle of Somme or whatever it was back then. Yeah. Those days are over. Now it's like all hidden. You don't know what's what. And it's just all this blurred. And since then, you know, in the, in the spiritual terms, the trees have been growing together ever since. And, you know, the wheat and the tares, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge and... You know, they, they, they've been growing and growing. Now, back in the days of Noah, the, the tree of knowledge got kind of trimmed back a little bit. You know what I mean? That tree got kind of chopped back a bit. It's funny. I, I, I would have liked to take a picture to show you, but on the way, just, you know, like this, there's a this piece of road in, 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 in England. We pass it all the time when we go shopping. And they've got these poplar trees. And they're about yay big. And I don't know why, but like about 30 foot high, They've chopped them off straight, right? And they're the oddest looking things. So you've got a straight tree trunk that's like this big, 30 foot tall, and on the top you've got loads of these little trees growing out from the top. But like, like multiplied, not one, like, like 15. And it's the oddest looking, weirdest thing. And you just think, you know, when you chop something down, usually it kind of grows back a bit faster this time. You know what I mean? It's true. Yeah. So back in the days of Norwich, it got trimmed, but uh, it started growing again, and it grew pretty quick. You know, you cut the apple trees back, and they grow back stronger. Brother Hatfield would have been able to tell you all about that. You see, the seed 
From the, from the, um, the seed of the false vine came through the ark. Although it had been cut back, it was still there. And it began now to grow again. And in the days of Noah, if you notice, in the, listen carefully, in the days of Noah, the, the, the false vine was fully matured. Fully matured. Yeah? Because, and it was bearing fruit big time. It was bearing the same fruit we see today. Let's read Matthew 24, and we'll see that. Matthew 24, 35 to 39. Matthew 24, we've just been in here, haven't we? Matthew 23. Matthew 24, 35 to 39. It says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as in the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so also shall the coming of the Son of Man be. So we see there very clearly that however it will be, A millisecond before the rapture was exactly how it was in the days of Noah. See, that tree of knowledge, that that, the false vine was to such a point of maturity back then. Mm. See, and it's the same fruits of Satan that's being manifested. And now if the fruit of the tree of life is all this peace, joy, long-suffering, and so on and so forth, then the tree of the false vine is going to be the exact opposite. And that's what we see today. That's exactly what we see today. Fruits of evil, fruits of Lucifer. And, you know, the last time I looked out my window, it's pretty bad out there. It's not so nice anymore. You know, we see the fruit of this false vine. We see it as in the days of Noah. We see the same thing today. And now at the end time, which is Matthew 24, 24, Matthew 24, 24, Okay, we see these vines growing super close. So Matthew 24, 24, it says, uh, For there shall arise false Christs, false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So now we see this false vine. Remember, it's the religious vine. It's the same one that started out back then. The same one that started out back when it was worship and all the rest of it and all, and all uh, in, in heaven through Lucifer. Then it came down to earth. It was in the Garden of Eden. And it was Cain and then Lucifer and the, the Pharisees and dan, 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 dan. We see this. It's, it becomes so close now at the end that these branches are kind of blurry. Kind of blurry. And you know, if you've got, if you've got to like two trees, and they're kind of all like absolutely growing all mangled together. If you, do, you, do you have that game here, like as children, where you, you follow the lines and you find out where it ends, like A goes to but you look for the little boat or the flag or something when you're a kid? It's a bit like that. So if you, if you get all the trees all mangled and together and that, simple. Grab a branch, follow it all the way down to the roots, and you'll find what seed it came from, which tree it's from. But actually, they get kind of blurred. They're kind of together and they're so close that they kind of look the same. And if it was possible, it was, listen carefully, they shall show great signs and wonders. (laughs) We're talking about, we're talking about ministries that have got full on like healings and, 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 and big, we're talking about, when's like, you know, when's the last time you had like 50 people down at the altar all from the world straight in it doesn't happen we're talking about ministries that have like coming to the altar and giving the heart to somebody you know we've got we've got miracles happening we've got all these things going the great signs and wonders it says that if it was possible it would deceive the very elect listen guys we are human right so if you've never seen me before and I come here and brother Chad says oh brother Simon I'd like you to meet me said, fine 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 and then I at the end of the service anybody who's sick come forward if I just lay my hand on the head like that Okay, be a show, a manly show, and suddenly they're healed, they walk out, legs grow, everything else, it's all totally healed. Now that is totally accessible when you come and get prayer, but it's not a show, right? But if you make a show about it, I'm telling you, within a week, I'll be invited everywhere. True? Great signs and wonders, but you guys, you would look at it and you'd say, whoa, 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 he's making a show, that ain't the Lord. See what I mean? But you see, it's so close now, and it's this great signs and wonders, it gets so close. If it was possible, it would deceive even the elect, the vines. You know, look, unless, unless you've got the Lord living in you, unless you've got that seed in you, you will be deceived. Just read Mark 13. Mark 13. We're all over in the scripture, which is fine. Mark 13, verse 9 to 11, please. 
Mark 13, 9 to 11. The Lord's good. Mark 13, 9 to 11. Okay. It says, but take heed to yourself, for they shall deliver you up to the councils. That's the false vine trying to kill the, the, the true vine, yeah? And remember, deliver you up to the councils and synagogues. This is church we're talking about. This is religious. Not like, oh, they'll deliver you to the world. And, no, 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 no. It, they'll deliver you to churches. They shall take each yourself, and they shall deliver you up to councils. And in synagogues you shall be beaten. You shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake for a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be published among all, all nations. But when they shall lead you and deliver you, I like this. When they shall deliver you and lead, uh, deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what you shall speak. Neither do premeditate whatever shall be given you in that hour that ye start speak ye. For it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. Which one's the Holy Ghost? That one. So, in these situations, right? In these situations, who speaks? It's not you, it's him. So, when you are cornered by the enemy in any situation and you don't know what to say and you pray, Lord, help me, please, suddenly it's him in you that brings the answer. And sometimes it's quite cool because sometimes we look back and it's like, hey, where did that come from? It's true. It's happened to me loads of times. It's like, oh, mate, because I ain't that clever. People think, yeah, going to, somebody stripped me down once, so I just kind of said what I said, and I can't remember. And they, they, they were just so frustrated, and like, you've always been a good talker, and stormed off. And I just looked, and I thought, yeah, but I'm the one who actually can't talk. I'm the one who just kind of fumbles and mumbles and kind of like just, you know, just have a go and just say it and wiggle your way out of it. But, you know, sometimes it's like we're shocked. It's, we shouldn't be shocked. So we're so stupid. We're shocked because he speaks through us, but he's just told us that he's going to speak through us. But when it happens, it's like, mate, how, how did that happen? Come on. Amen. You know, so when we're cornered by the enemy, it's him that's speaking, and it's the same one that's in you, the same one that's in you that's going to speak, is the same one that can't be deceived. Amen. So if it was possible we'd be deceived, how is it not possible that we're deceived? Because of that one that's going to speak out of you. That same one stops you being deceived. That same one discerns. Whoa, that's the false vine here now. That's wrong. Amen. You see, they're so close that you can't hardly put a piece of paper between them. Yeah? But if you give them now the word test, Give them the word test and you'll see what's inside of them. Because the Holy Ghost inside you cannot be deceived. It can't be. It can't be. Notice, if it was possible, but it's not, we can't be deceived. As long as he's inside you, that is it. It's like, it's like, it's like when, you're, when he's sealed inside you, that's it. The boxcar's been sealed. Now, if you want to know what's inside somebody, just give him a squeeze. Stamp on Brother John's uh, foot. I won't, brother. But just stamp on his foot and he'll just say, brother, I know that you love me. That's it. That's it. Done. See what I mean? You stamp on someone else's foot and, mate, put it this way. If you squeeze a lemon, you're going to get lemon juice. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's true, isn't it? Just give him a squeeze. I'm not telling you to go and squeeze everyone. <laughs> I'm just saying that if by their fruits you're going to know them. By their fruits you're going to know them. We, um, we were down in New Zealand and there was this fruit tree outside and they looked, they, it was full of oranges, uh, lemons, wasn't it? Lemons. And I'm talking like hundreds of lemons. It was huge, right? It's like, well, nobody's touching them because they're lemons. And the person out there, it was an Airbnb, they said, oh, yeah, just go for it, mate, take them. We were like, okay, well, Miriam might have one if she likes a bit of lemons, so like sweets. Do you know, they, they were like oranges. They were like oranges. So, what sort of lemon it was, I've got no idea. It's true, isn't it? They were super sweet. They were super sweet. They were like oranges, but they were like a lemon. So sometimes you can't always look on the outside and say, oh, that's a lemon, that's going to be... Sometimes, you know, I might look at Brother Joe and say, mate, you look pretty sour, bro. And then you talk to him and he's as sweet as honey. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But you can't always go by the outside. You know, so buy your fruit. What is the fruit? It's not just what it looks like, it's what's inside the fruit. And if you notice, inside the fruit, there is a seed. And that seed is an exact multiplication of the DNA seed of what was planted in the tree. And go back until you get to where Sister Joyce has been. She was hiding there. Hid in Christ from before the... It's true. Hid in Christ before the foundation of the world. Okay. 
But the Bible says just give him the word test. And, you know, the Lord Jesus, was, he was the rose of Sharon. He didn't look like it. Beaten, smashed down, hung on the cross. But he was squeezed. And out of him came that perfume of the rose of Sharon. He was the lily of the valley. He got squeezed. And the same perfume that came out of the Lord is the same perfume that comes out of the bride when she gets squeezed. It's exactly the same. Notice that the Lord said in John, we won't read it, John 10, 27, he said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Listen, the Lord says, My sheep hear my voice, they know my voice. He said, His voice is also His word. And so when you hear the word, if there's something that's a little bit off, you can hear it. And you're like, whoa, 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 because my sheep know my voice. So as long as we're bringing it here, and it's the word of God that we're bringing, it's like, mate, that's so true. That's brilliant. That's so true. Because my sheep need, know my voice. So if we give somebody a word test, if they're his sheep, they will know the sound of the word. They will know it. And they'll say amen. There'll be a deep down on the inside that's going to respond to them. Thank you for getting me the brook, Brother Franco. <clears throat> Let's lean not to thine own understanding. It's 1965. You know, Brother Van's talking about the cattle being brought down. He says, the cattle after, the cattle after their kind. Many times, in bringing a roundup down. Now, this is something that we, we haven't got cattle now. We used to have fairish cattle, but not now. Um, but this is like different for you American guys. Because this is talking about like the thousands. He says, we'll bring down whole herds of cattle and the little calves. And I used to wonder how they would ever know their own mama. Now, they coming down out of the mountains, the cattle all mixed together. And a cow is with a calf, maybe a little hungry calf, might nurse from a little from another mother if he's real hungry. But when we stop them out on the prairie and the mama starts through that crowd of cows... Uh, until she finds her own. The calf is running for its mother. It knows that certain wine in her ball. She's bawling for the calf. And other mothers are bawling till you can't even hear yourself think. But the little, the little calf will find that certain call of its mother because it's a part of its mother. A born again Christian from heaven, he's a part of this word, right? Another mama, he will not follow his part of the word. And he stays with the word. Listen. We've seen it ourselves with the cattle and with the sheep. You know, it's like when you're sorting them out and you've got, you've got loads of there's, there's, there's the, the hundreds of them kicking around and it, it gets loud. It gets so loud. Honestly, you can't hear yourself think. You can't even scream at each other to talk. And yet in amongst all that, it's crazy how the lambs and the sheep, even with the sheep, they find the way straight to the mum. How does it happen? I don't know. But they know the sound of the mother. And we know the sound of our Father, His voice, His word. We always will find our way back to our Father, wherever you are. He's calling for us. Remember, um, no man ever searched looking for God. God's calling man. He's that one who's, I'd say bawling, you know what I mean? He's the one who's shouting out to us, come on, Brian, come on. Do you know what I mean? He's calling to us and we hear him. You know, when we, when we were kids, you might think I'm a bit crass, but, but I, I used to just whistle for our kids. <laughs> Like, I don't know, I'd whistle them. They knew. I tell you, I'm telling you, there'd be a crowd like with the homeschooling thing or whatever. There are like hundreds of kids running around. I'd go, I can't even whistle now because I'm, I'm the I'm, mouth's gone dry. I'd give a real loud whistle. I tell you, what, out of the whole crowd, our kids would come straight to me. It sounds like, like, like a bit, you know, a bit unfatherly. Mate, it's not. It's just a way of calling your kids, them knowing. You know, I don't whistle for them on a night. Oi, oi. I just shout at them. <laughs> but. <laughs> But do you know what I mean? They knew that sound. They knew that sound above all. And you know what? We know the sound of our Lord. Amen. And sometimes he doesn't whistle. Sometimes it's just a still, small voice. But we go straight to him. We know that voice. The bride knows the sound of his voice. She knows the sound of his word. And somehow, it's called grace. Somehow we follow that sound until we get to where we're supposed to be. Before the throne of God. The Lord is good. You know, the two on the road to Emmaus, they were walking together. And the Lord gave them the word the whole time. He was giving them the word all day long. And when they heard it, something kind of was burning on the inside. It's like, mate, something, there's something here. You know, and, and the two, the two, see, the, the, the two, the two, uh, the deep, and the, the deep calling to the deep, and the Lord Jesus and the two, and something in them, and, and, and uh, come, come time for them to this, oh no, the Lord, please stay, stay, stay. They, they, they stopped, they didn't want, there's something, an unseen bond, the exact opposite of what Cain had to his brother. 
There's this bond that it's just like, mate, I don't, you know, when, when we kind of said goodbye to Brother John, I kind of cried, you know what I'm saying? You know, because, because there's a bond. There's a bond, it's not seen, you can put a piece of paper between us, but, but when we say goodbye to, to, to one another, there's this unseen bond that we just love each other. We appreciate each other. It's that deep cut, and they felt that on the road to the Emmaus. And the word came to the word there, walking on the road to Emmaus, and this came this reaction. You know, the seed that was in them, okay, came from the tree of life that was walking and talking with them. The seed that was in them came from the third man walking, the tree of life. And it can only be a reaction when that happens. You know, the fruit of the true vine. Let's look at the fruit of the true vine. You know, we're in the world and the world's a fallen condition. We can see the false vine. You know, the false vine is, is showing off its fruit everywhere. It's absolutely everywhere. You know, we can't escape it. But as the two vines have come to maturity, the true vine is also bearing fruit. It's not just the false vine. The, tr- the, the true vine, although small... Listen, you know, I was going to draw a little, a little graph, but it's like, I um, could do, I suppose. I could do. I could do. Um, so I'm just going to move it this way. This is just, this is just Simon. But I like, I like to just think about this. If we have a graph and we have a uh, power displayed... Power displayed. Notice it's tower power displayed, okay? And it's going up here, okay? And that's the max, and that's the zero. And then here we have time, again. Time, okay? And time is going this way. So this is Eden here. Here is Eden. Eden. And here is like now. Okay, this is now. This is 2024. 2024. I like doing these little graphs. But the point is, the power displayed back in the Garden of Eden, right? <laughs> Listen carefully. One man... One man, mountain, over there, tree, move. You're going to be called this, you're going to be called that. Full, full power, full dominion. So the power displayed of Adam starts here, right? Power displayed in one man. Now then, how much power was displayed in Lucifer in the Garden of Eden? One word. One word. So the power displayed starts down here. But as time goes on, the power displayed has gone up there for Satan, Lucifer. So this is Lucifer. Remember, it's power displayed, not power, actual power. And the power displayed of God and God's children has come to the point now like this. Notice, we are such a small minority. We... That even though the church is full of the power, it's not a show, we have got such a small minority, right? And yet Satan is now in the majority and his power is being displayed in the world. You see, we, listen, you know, we think, oh, it's, it's all gone wrong. It's not. Because it looks like we're going down in power. You've missed the point. We're going back to Eden. We're not, we're not coming down. The bride ain't coming down. The bride's going back up. We're going back to Eden. We're going back to that full power. You know, the world, the world looks and thinks, oh, Christians will look at them. They're just a, a tiny bunch of, of nobodies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like it. Power, power displayed, power shown. We're going back to be Eden. We're going back up to that position. And Satan, sorry, mate, you're going back down to zero. From zero, from hero to zero. And we're going from the zero to the hero. Yeah, 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 Sure. You know, the bride is now displaying, although it's not a show for the world, she's just, listen, the Lord Jesus, the greatest power that ever lived. Amen. And how did he display it? Beaten, whipped, hung on the cross to die. Yes. How is it going to be for the bride? The greatest power. You'll be beaten by your brother, beaten by your sister. I'm just saying, you know what I mean? Or you'll be beaten by the world. You'll be beaten, knocked down, and in the eyes of the Lord, that's the most beautiful thing ever. And as that rose of Sharon bride is crushed, the perfume rises to heaven, and that is a sweet savour in the smell of God. The true vine is bearing its fruit in you. And when you hear this word preached, just like the two on the road to Emmaus, you say, didn't our hearts burn as we sat and listened today? It wasn't the Lord good, didn't he speak to us? And that's because the original seed that's in you is responding to the seed of the word that's coming over. 
And, there's, and it can only be a reaction. It can only be. You know, you get nervous. Oh, Lord, you know, how am I going to say anything? How am I going to do this? How am I gonna do this? It's like, you know what? Just leave it. Like Brother Carl said, I think Brother Lonnie said, just, just wheel the barrow out to the front and that's it. That's your job done. How should we? Why should we worry? We know that the word's going to encourage somebody somewhere. Just, just give it out. That's the word, it's the original word, it's going out, the two, the two, the two uh, powers coming together, and there has to be this reaction. The original word that's in you is responding. We are bearing the fruit, the Lord is manifesting his life in us. Just read James 5, James 5, 7 to 8, 7 and 8, James 5, 7 and 8. The Lord's good. I'll just blow my nose. James 5, 7 and 8. It says, Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he receive the early and the latter rain. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Notice here, the husbandman, the Lord Jesus, he's waiting for this precious fruit of the earth now. You know, these, the trees have been, the seeds have been sown, the trees have grown, and now the fruits are shown, and the Lord is waiting for this precious fruit of the earth. And what fruits he's waiting for? He's waiting for you. Amen. He's waiting for the bride. The bride is that fruit to come to maturity. And listen, seeds don't bear fruit. So when you first came to the Lord, wherever we were in our life, we loved the Lord, something inside, we couldn't help it. But like Abel, Cain, all the rest, we couldn't help it. We just loved the Lord. But we weren't kind of bearing the fruit. Because we were still a seed. It doesn't make us any less, but we're still a seed. But now this bride tree is so mature, it's bearing exactly the same fruit that he did. See, let's read in Paradox. Paradox. Just read Paradox 64. It's actually the piece right before that, what we've read already. It says, And today, this age we're living in, there is a bride tree. No, it's not a seed. There's a bride tree coming forth, see? Truly, the tree has come up. And they, soon as they organized, they couldn't step any farther. What happens? They organized, go out on this limb. Then that limb is pruned, according to St. John 15th chapter, talk about the, uh, when it's, you know, through the church ages. Uh, according to St. John the 15th chapter, he prunes them off, and they never use no more. But in the heart of that tree comes forth the fruit. Right in the top of it, when the tree is fully matured, that's now. It can't go no further. Right in the top, the last church age is here. She's come into full mature. It's a bride tree. Amen. See, the bride is this precious fruit of the earth. The fruit that is manifest in the life of Christ. The fruit is, I just want to read a uh, spoken word, the original seed. I think Brother Chad read this uh, as well whenever he preached on the... Uh, Whatever it was, I'll listen to it on the way over here. And um, so, sometimes, sometimes you you kind of you kind of see something. It's like you know the bride is that tree of life. The bride is the tree of life, and you're kind of doing your notes, and you know that you know it's come from the Lord. You know it's come from the Lord. If you minister, you'll know it. You know it, brother Kyle. You know it comes from the Lord. But sometimes it's just too unbelievable. It's too scary, and and, and I kind of left it out, and I, and I thought, oh, I gotta. And then, just by chance, I, I kind of I listened to this, and Brother Chad brought this quote. It's like, boom. I think it's this one, or it's the next one. Uh, spoken words, original seed, 57. <clears throat> it says, all right. I think this is, I know this is actually, it, it goes on to that other quote, I think. He says, all right. Now, here's what I'm trying to say to you. This is pick up the pen, remember. The law of reproduction brings forth of its kind. These last days, true church bride comes to the headstone, will be a super church, a super race, as they near the great headstone. They will be much like, so much like him, even they will be in his very image. In order to be united with him, they will be one. Listen, if he's the tree of life, and they're going to be one, then what does that make Sister Joyce? Amen. True. What does that make you, Brother John? makes you the tree of life. 
They will be, talking to the bride, they will be the very manifestation of the word of the living God. That is strong words. And you know what? That ain't even Brother Manham. That's pick up your pen. That's the one who just said that. Is that one. And those words were spoken back then when that power was just infolding within itself. Those words were true as today. The Lord saw us seeing here, manifesting himself. He saw us back then. Mate. The law of reproduction. She has to bear him. She has to. She has to bear his every characteristic. She comes from him. She's bone of his bone. She's seed of his seed. The bride is the fruit of the original, original seed tree, the tree of life. And the fruit, she's bearing the fruit of that original tree. It's the law of reproduction. It has to be. Look, my forehead. If you know the Abbott family, you'll say, he's an Abbott. Look, he's even got the teeth. It's the law of reproduction. We can't help it. Next time you can look at our Josh uh, and you're going to say, mate, Chubb, you've got two big teeth. And be like, yeah, that's me. I can't help it. Comes from my dad. And then you say, well, it's your fault. I'll say, well, <laughs> don't look at me. Look at my dad. And my dad will say, well, don't look at me. Look at my granddad. Because my granddad was the same. See what I mean? It's the law of reproduction. It's, it's, it's Christ, the mystery of God revealed in you. The mystery of God revealed in you. Just like we've read in James 5. The coming of the Lord is drawing nigh, and that means it's kind of harvest time. It means the stuff's got to be getting ripe. The precious fruit is going to be taken into the garner. It's coming to the point where it's, it's getting ripe. Now, harvest time means kind of separation. It's true. It's a separation of the two vines. It's this culmination of this whole plan. The tares and the thistles will be separated out to be burned. And the harvest time means separation. It, it separates the bride, takes that grain from the bride away from the field that she's been raised in. She's been raised in this world, the world, this fallen world. Well, that's where we've been raised. That's where we have to grow in there. And we'll be taken away. But for those who are left behind, it's also a separation time. It's separation from grace. It's separation. The, the harvest time, the rapture, is separation, all sides. Total separation. It's separation. The Lord's coming soon, you know, and as the scripture says, Luke, Luke 3, 9, we can read it actually. Luke 3, 9. Luke 3, 9. Luke 3, 9. Remember, no, let's read this. Now also, the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, which bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Notice that the axe is laid to the root of the tree. Which root are you talking about? Amen. Whereabouts on this little diagram are we? The root of the tree. That's a seed. That's a tree. I tell you what, it's, it's quite close in there. It's going to be laid to the heart of Lucifer. That axe is going to be separated. Those two, those two vines, if they don't bring forth the good fruit... It's going straight back to the root of the tree. The root's pretty close to the seed. Amen. You know, it's kind of the root is kind of where the tree comes from. And the Lord's going to deal that death blow. Amen. It's coming that time. You know, the axe of God's judgment is laid to the root of the trees. And if it doesn't bring forth the fruit of the original tree, it's going to be hewing to, thrown into the fire. Because a seed has to bring forth after its kind. And if it's a seed from the Father, that's what it's going to be producing. By your fruits, you know them. It's, it's God's law of reproduction. You know, and, and the axe is, it's the axe laying time, it's the harvest time. You know, everything that's not seed of the original is going to be separated, everything. You know, Brother John, he's combining with his maze, he sent me a film of it, it was beautiful. The Lord's good. And I'm, I'm pleased. You know, everybody, everybody that you have contact with, they always put the Lord straight into everything. You know, he's home mind and he's like, oh, the Lord is good, brother. And he's enjoying. It's just give thanks to the Lord. But, you know, Brother John's combine, he, he just swapped it out. This is when we were here last time. He just swapped his combine. If, if his combine starts to separate out the shucks and a few tassels and all the rest and sticks it into the auger, into the hopper, you're going to get a new combine. You're going to sort it out. It's, it's a separation of anything that's not the seed that you want to be in the hopper, which you're going to take home and put into that heavenly kingdom, which would be that round tank that he's got back at the farm. You know what I mean? Anything that's not fit for the cows, <clears throat> for the king's table, as it were, is going to be separated out. It's natural types of spiritual. You know, 
Now, the question is, when Brother, when Brother John goes to harvest his, his, his crop, what's being harvested? Ah, oh, it's maize. Well, yeah, it is, but it's actually fruit. Because the fruit is the harvest of whatever you're planting. It's not the fruit, it's not just like tomatoes or whatever it is. It's the fruit of the harvest, it's the grain. So if it's maize, it's maize. That's the fruit of the harvest. Yeah? And, and, and I'm telling you, the Lord is not harvesting maize here. The Lord's harvesting the fruit, the precious fruit. You are the harvest. You are the one that's going to be taken away. You're going to be separated from everything else. You're the fruit of the bride tree. You are the fruit of the, you are the, fruit of the tree of life. You know, the bride is bearing that fruit. She's bearing his fruit. It's his roots and it's his fruits. This is, I think this is, the, this is the quote I was talking about. Christ is the mystery of God revealed, 1963. I love that. It says, now remember, he is that tree of life. Contrary to the serpent seed, you see, he is that seed, the woman's seed, the tree of life in the garden. Unless they put forth their hands and move this tree, they'd eat of the tree and live forever. So the right, so Lord, in Brother Brown's bringing that again, we've read it already. If, 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 if the way wasn't guarded to that tree of life, even if you'd sin, you suddenly eat of the tree of life. It's beautiful for us. It doesn't matter what we are and what we've been. You eat of the tree of life and you've got life. Okay, and he's the only tree that can be taken that you can live forever. His word is life. And that be the word then, the word of God, which Eve turned down in the Garden of Eden. Then here is Christ, the word made manifest. And when he come on earth, he was the tree of life. Do you believe that? The congregation says amen. And Rome, what did they do? He had to be chopped down. A bit like those poplar trees I told you about. One trunk, chopped off. And it's the weirdest thing. There's like 20 come out the top. See what I mean? They might have chopped him down, but look what came out of the bride. Look what comes out. He had to be chopped down, and he was put on a tree of disgrace. Cursed is, the tree, is he that hangeth on the tree. Become a curse for the human race. And now, through that, he brings forth a bride tree, which will be the tree of life restored back to him as husband and wife in the garden of Eden. Oh, glory to God. By the same word and the same God made manifest in husband and wife, the same bride tree back again. You know, those, those uh, 15 little twigs that grow on top of them thing, they're actually all the same tree. You chop it off and it grows. Noah, it came through the flood, the sin. The sin that was after the flood, they chopped it off and it grew back, all those 15 sin as well. And what was it? It was the same seed, it was the same tree. But we, we see now, it's the same tree that's restored back now, and it's not some ugly looking tree, it's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. But you see, he's bringing forth a bride tree, which, as he said, which will be the tree of life. Mate, it's a fully matured tree. It's bearing his fruits. It's manifesting him in every single way. And the tree comes from the seed that was way back there at the beginning. Before anything was manifested. John 1 in the beginning, not Genesis 1 in the beginning. John 1 in the beginning, beginning. Right? When it was still just the word. When everything was just there and nothing was yet manifest as it were. We were chosen in him before the foundation of the world to bear this fruit. It's amazing. Now we're in 2024 and it's time when these two trees are fully manifesting now their fruits. It's, it's, it, his plan, his plan for you and me is to bring us to such a maturity that we are him. We become him. We, you know, the exact same seed that was in the beginning, now in a multiplied form. The bride's coming now to such a maturity that the world now, by looking at you, can actually see him. Think about it. The world wants to know what the Lord Jesus looked like. Yeah, I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it. Yeah, yeah, but you know, you're not the prettiest bunch of people. Neither no, was the Lord. Hey, there was no beauty in him that men should desire him. You know, there's none of us that are super beautiful. No. <laughs> On the inside, we're the most beautiful thing the Lord ever created. The Lord is good. You know, we are coming to such a maturity that the bride is manifesting him in every way. Brother Kyle, I think, preached on Ecclesiastes 3. 
And there's a time for everything. It lists everything. There's a time and a season for this, for that. There's a season. I'm telling you, there's also a time and a season for the bride to manifest his fruit. There's a, time, there's a time for the bride to show the world what was in the original seed. There's a time, and that is the time. We are the chosen people to show the world. We're the chosen people to manifest Christ. And, you know, we come to a close. And uh, I don't know how long we've been. I don't, I don't want to know, but it's okay. I had to get rid of loads of notes because I just thought, oh, Lord. But all is well. Let's just, as we come to a close, let's read uh, Luke 24. Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. I'm coming to a close, but not quite yet. We'll get there. Luke chapter 24. Let me blow one of again. And we'll read 44 and 45. Luke chapter 24. 44 to 45. So, and he said unto them, these are the words, this is when he's, after he's resurrected, he comes to see them, comes to see his disciples. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Listen, the Lord opened their eyes of understanding. The Lord opened their eyes. Even though he'd walked with them for years before, years, he'd been explaining to them. It's a bit like, it's a bit like you know, dipping the sop. Same thing. There comes a time when he opens their eyes of understanding. He'd walked with them for years, but there was a specific time when their eyes were to be opened unto what he was talking about. He'd already taught the scriptures, but the revelation was only given later on. It was given at the right time. Listen, in 1963, the seals were broke. Yeah, the seals were loosed. But there was a specific time when the revelation of what it was all about was to come. You know, it was, the revelation was to be given later on. So I want to show you this little, this little, I'll draw you a little diagram here. I'm getting used to this, and no, I could never have one back home. Sorry, Brother Michael. <clears throat> Listen, I've got to copy this one to show you. So it's like, I love drawing these little graph time, okay. So it's like, it's like, a, it's like a, 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 a little graph, and here we have... Uh, rapturing revelation. Rap- I'm, I'm saying rapturing revelation and not just revelation. Okay, rapturing revelation. Okay. And now here we have levels. So this is zero, and that's one, two, three, all the way up. And this is maximum is like 100%. Because that's, that's your maximum. That's, that's, that's the rapture. Okay, now here is time. Again, we have time. Usually we have time at the bottom, so it's time. And here we have first church age second church age, and so on and so forth. So first church age here, okay? And now we have this kind of growth. We have these steps. Brother, Brother uh, John sings that song, you know, this uh, seven steps, and that's it, yeah. So now here we have, this is the bride, and she's kind of walking up these steps. The revelation is growing. So as we're, as we're going through these church ages, this, this, this revelation is growing. Revelation is growing. It's growing. We can't help it. We, we can't help it. What is it? It's the tree. That tree that's growing in us. The seed is becoming more and more mature. And now we get to a point here, and here we have 1963. We have 1963. And now here we have, this is the rapture. Rapture. This one. So now we know at the point of the rapture, this revelation level has to be here. It has to be here. Okay? But we are right now, and I'm just, you know, we're looking for the Lord's coming every day, we know that. But we're saying that we're here right now. This is us. Us. It's not the US, I'm sorry. (laughs) It's just us. This is now. So we see this kind of time period, look, yeah? Here. It's been this time period. 
You know. The seals were broken back then. Yeah. Nobody really knew what it was on about. Yeah. True. It's true. Let's be honest. Okay. See, he opens the eyes of understanding yes. at a specific point in time. When the Lord was walking with me, he was preaching the words and the whole time, he was the word. And yet they didn't have a clue what he was on about, although something on the inside was burning. But they didn't even know what it was, but he was just, he was just like that deep calling to deep. I don't understand it, but I just believe it, Lord. But there's a specific time when, he's, when they opened their eyes. It's beautiful. And you know, revelation is given. It can only be given. We know the scripture, Simon, blessed art thou, Simon, by Jonah, for blessed are not the redeemers to, but the Father which is heaven. For revelation is only given. Amen. It can't be learned. Yes. See, and the, rapture, the, the, the revelation of actually who we are and what it's all about has come kind of now-ish. You know, it's only now that we're truly seeing who we are. Mate, I'm telling you, the first time that I, because I mean, when, we, when the Lord brought us out from where we came from and, and the Lord began the ministry, it was on the back of who we are because I could kind of see who we are. I was kind of getting, whoa, hang about. How can we be the bride of Christ? If we're him, the word says that the two shall no longer be twain but one. Therefore, that makes us kind of him. That's what Brother Adam was saying back there. But no one ever dared to say it because you being a man make yourself God, the Christian crucified the Lord Jesus for saying that. They would have crucified the bride for doing that as well. And if, and if the Lord does not come, there'll be no flesh saved. Why? Because the false vine will crucify the bride for saying that you are God. That's who we are. That's where we are. And the revelation's only just come now. It's only just come now. Why? Mate, this is the last days of the last days. We are in the last days. I tell you, we are so close. Musicians, can you come please? Listen. One of these days, the bride is going to be gone. Now, I'm not the best artist, I know. But I'm just going to put here, the rapture for the bride is this, this takeoff. It's like one of those kiddies' little rockets, look. The flames pouring out the bottom. And there's Sister Joyce inside. It's true. One of these days, we're going to be gone. And now... Listen, when they send up a rocket, the last thing they put in is the rocket fuel. Amen. The last thing, the most volatile revelation right. is put in at the last moment. Yeah. Because if the devil knows, catches this revelation, he could do great damage, like Brother Ram says. Right. We're right at the end. This is the hour, this is the season we're in. This is where we are. We have to be ready. It says, keep your lamps all trimmed and burning for the bridegroom watch and wait. It's manifesting time. It's lamp trimming time. We're in that time. It's, it's a time when the, true, the battle is raging more than ever between the two trees. You know, we may be in a mixed up body, but the seed that's in us, that's the real you and me. It ain't a mixed tree. We only carry... The, the real me, the real you, carries the original seed. Amen. Listen, it's home time. Yeah. You know, I hated school. I hated school. I had a bad, a bad childhood. I hated school, and you know the most favourite words that I heard as a child? At 20 to 4, okay children, it's home time. Yes. <laughs> that was my favourite words. And that's what the Lord's saying to his children. The Lord is gently calling us now because it is home time. It's time to be gone. It's why this sudden burst of revelation, this, the rocky fuel that, listen, we can't ignore it. And each one of us in here knows it, especially the old ones that have been around a long time. You've never heard things that you've been hearing in the last five years or so. Never, never. Although it's been there the whole time. But there's a time when the eyes of the opening of the understanding has to be opened. It's right at the last time. The rocky fuel, soon we're going to be gone. Soon we'll hear the Lord say, it's home time. Children, it's home time. We sing 1051, please. Uh, be it unto me according to thy word. You know, we want the Lord to plant his seed. And, and look, you know, it, it's, it, it's fine saying, oh, Lord, we want you to plant our seed in us. He's done it. When? 
before the foundation of the world, Sister Joyce is just getting her amnesia nudged. That's right. You know, we're all getting our amnesia. That, 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 the memory jogged a little bit. I had steak and potatoes last night. You know what I mean? It's nothing to do with your cooking, Sister Jill. I really appreciate your cooking. And I wanted to say as well, thank you so much for your love and what you've done. Special thanks to Johanna. I think she's, uh, she gave us a bedroom. Bless her heart. That's fruits being manifested. I tell you, and we left last time, we, we didn't have enough luggage going home. So we had, we bought loads of creams and stuff, you know, like hand creams and all the rest of it. And bless her heart, in the room, she's put it on a shelf, like a little towel and that all nice and all nicely lined up. That's fruits of love. Amen. We're not praising somebody and listening, we're just saying, look, the, the fruits are being manifested. If I go into each one of your homes, I'll see the scriptures on the wall. I'll see the Bible open. On the table, I'll see these things. What it is, it's the manifestation of the fruits of the original fruit tree, the tree of life. Yes. I'm just thankful that the Lord's changed me. So we sing, you know, be unto me according to that word. The, the word, you know, may your word be born according. Oh, that's the wrong one. Tenth. I want to, sorry, I'll give you the wrong one. Uh, yeah, that's it. Is that the one? No, sorry. I gave you the wrong song. I asked him this morning and I, I looked for it and I found it and I found the wrong one. Yes, thank you. You know, the seed has been planted a long time ago. We don't need the Lord to plant that in the Word. We don't need the Lord to say, you know, Lord, let your Word be born. It's more than born. It's manifesting. But we want the Lord to manifest himself and to come into our heart day, every day, more and more. Let's just pray before we sing. Lord Jesus, we love you, Lord. And we just bless your name, Lord. I'm thankful, Lord, that you just, you came and spoke, Lord. I was in such a muddle, Lord Jesus. And Lord, I'm just thankful, Lord. Just let your word just go out and touch the hearts of the people. We love you, Lord. It's just, it's, it's just looking in the mirror. We're coming up those seven steps. We're looking into that mirror and pulling our ear and touching our eyes and saying, but, but Father, that's me. And we're falling down and the reflection that we see in the mirror is the Lamb of God, the tree of life. Lord Jesus, we're coming to that resurrection time. We're coming to that realization time. The resurrecting power that's in us, Lord Jesus, is just beginning to manifest. We love you, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you, Lord. Help us, Lord, we pray. We love you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Can we just sing this, please? Amen. <clears throat> Let your word be born in the manger of Play.
Father, Lord, as we come to the close of the service, Lord, that song so expresses what's on the inside. If we could just give you more, Lord, more preeminence in our lives, Lord. We know that you have more for us, more revelation. We haven't reached that ending place, Lord, where you're calling us to come higher. So we know there's more. Father, through your word, as you've done this morning, you just keep revealing yourself to us. You keep showing us how much you love us, Lord, and how much you wanna draw us to yourself. Father, we just wanna say thank you this morning. Your word is so precious, the life inside, Lord, that draws us. It means so much to us that you'd come down, minister through a man, Lord, and we would hear you speaking. Father, just come and refresh Brother Simon, Lord. Today we pray, Father, touch him for what he's given. Lord, it's been just wonderful sitting in the presence, listening to the word. And as your people go from this place, Father, I pray your hand would be upon them. Father, you saw the needs, Lord, those that have physical needs. Even as Brother Simon was speaking of healing this morning, Lord, I believe your virtue was going to those that have a need. Father, we just pray that you would take each one of us. Lord, use us in this world of darkness for your kingdom. Lord, just bring our pastor back to us once again, we pray. Lord, give them traveling mercy on the road. And we just wanna worship you now to give you a little bit of thanks, Lord, to tell you how much it means all that you've done for us. We love you, we appreciate you. In the name of our Lord, we ask it. Amen, amen. How many enjoyed the word this morning? I know you did. The word was so wonderful to us. Amen, just remember to take your things with you if you would this day. A wedding on Tuesday. Looking forward to the wedding. Amen. And what God has in store for, for the Riley, Sister Abigail. We just want to sing a little bit. You're free to go. Worship as you like. He is my heir.